Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and I just read The Adventure of the Creeping Man by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. This is a part of my read-along series and book club with Steve Donahue. We're reading murder mysteries in the month of March, and we're reading all of the Sherlock Holmes short stories. And this is a, this is a really curious one. It um, is fully fully involved with the genre of horror and a huge step into the direction of the supernatural. <laughs> um, there are influences uh, that seem to directly come from uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, uh, a, a man uh, walking on his hands and feet and climbing, crawling up walls, um, even described as a bat on a wall. We'll get out to the reasons of all of that. And, and, <laughs> uh, and also maybe the closest to um, Poe's um, murder in the Rue Morgue where it has an incredibly unsatisfying uh, conclusion that the reveal uh, the the premise of the story gets so uh, horrific and so supernatural and outlandish it's difficult to think of how does this wrap up the next couple pages and so we, we, we have we, we get a little bit of a story some of it was very much unnecessary but uh, there's a very highly respected um, professor, older man. He um, becomes infatuated uh, with a young girl. She rebukes him. He then goes off to Prague, comes back, and he's acting all crazy. And we're being told this by um, the professor's secretary who's been his uh, lifelong secretary they've known each other for years and years and years talks about the sec secretary is explaining to uh, Sherlock he even opens all of his mail uh, has little uh, files where he'll, he'll take all the letters out he'll read them put them where they need to be so um, the secretary is like his closest confidant comes back from Prague now doesn't want the secretary t touching certain letters um, is acting crazy uh, just uh, being uh, violent and explosive and not not being himself he has um, a daughter uh, the, the secretary and the daughter are uh, canoodling they're interested in each other and then we start getting these um, scenes, these uh, scenes described to us of um, the, the, the man not walking on his hands and knees at, at nighttime, his dark, dark, hollowed rooms, but walking on his hands and feet and then uh, uprighting himself. Uh, the daughter um, sees her father uh, leave. He, he, he goes out the windows and he's crawling on the walls. Um, the daughter at the middle of the night opens up her window, the curtain of her window, sees her father, her father's face right up against the window, and then he crawls off the wall. Um, so that that's the, the, the premise. Um, I do really enjoy how it begins. So uh, Watson's off. At this point, we, we never hear anything about Watson's family or his wife. It's... Um, the biggest unsolved mystery of these uh, these stories, uh, what happened to Watson's wife. But he gets called back. We don't know where he is. He's, he's working at his practice. We, we do know that. And it's, it's a note from, what does it say? This is from Sherlock to Watson. Come at once if convenient. If inconvenient, come all the same. And what does he say? Anyway, anyway, so Sherlock arrives, and uh, Watson arrives, and Sher Sherlock says, I've been thinking about writing a treatise on dogs and how dogs can help um, 
solve crimes. And Watson says, well, I mean, we've kind of always been using bloodhounds. Sherlock goes, no, 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 that, that's too obvious. Um, I mean, when a dog um, starts biting its, or a dog's happy because the family's happy. The dog's unhappy when the family's unhappy. The dog's violent when the family is violent. And so if you have someone that's been happy and respectable and uh, living a good life and has a happy dog, and all of a sudden the dog starts biting the master, then we have a clue. Watson goes, what? This, this is what you're bringing me in for? And even though it's been all this time, and Watson uh, should just believe everything that Sherlock says, because at least from the reader's perspective, Sherlock's basically always right. Uh, there's just like one of those rare moments of disappointment in Watson's eyes. Like I was busy with my practice, I dropped everything, and you're talking about how a man got bit by his dog. And so this crazy professor, he gets a telegram from the secretary to come to come visit and investigate and all, all that, uh, is also now being bitten by his dog after he's had this transformation gets back from Prague, he's acting totally differently, climbing up the walls, walking on his hands and feet, um, and uh, being bitten by his dog, a big hound. The, the hound now has to be tied up outside. They, they still like the dog, but he's biting the master. Sherlock and Watson are going to go there and pretend like they have an appointment. They, they think that the professor is kind of forgetful because he's crazy. And they're just going to say, well, we have an appointment. If you don't remember, uh, then you must have forgotten. And it, it, was, it was a very nice surprise. Uh, it, it's it, one of the genuine surprises as, as far as a, um, a human emotion, human interaction. Uh, Sherlock and Watson go and uh, we know like Sherlock's the, the master of the skies and he's always fooling everybody and uh, he's charismatic and brilliant and can read the room and um, all those things. And so he's talking to the professor. He says, uh, well, we, we, we had an appointment. And the professor is just like outsmarting him. He says, well, do you have any written documentation? He says, well, no, no, we didn't bring any written documentation, but we do have an appointment calls over his secretary, um, do you have the written documentation? He says, no. He goes, right, so what, what, what are you doing here? Because we don't have an appointment. Sherlock and Watson try to hightail out of the room. The professor stops him at the door and calls him out and goes, all right, Mr. Holmes, <laughs> he's coming to my house, you're impersonating uh, some somebody, pretending like you have an appointment, and now that you, now that you're kind of uh, revealed, you're trying to run away. It was a great moment. So the the scenes, the horrific supernatural scenes, the uh, alarm and terror that we see um, evoked from all the people that are seeing it. It's really building up. Like what what could it possibly be? And Sherlock has been on this trail of the dates and figures out every nine days um, he has a fit of craziness and then it kind of calms down again. And so, uh, God, what happens? Okay, so he comes bursting out of the window, the professor, now all high on something, crawling up the walls. Sherlock and Watson are watching them. They, they have their plan. He runs over and it's just this nasty scene. Uh, the dog is chained up to a post or something, has a collar and all that. And this man, uh, he's on his hands and feet and he's tormenting and taunting the dog, just getting as close as he can to where the chain is most taut. And so uh, you have this like this petrified, confused, ferocious, um, uh, snarling, barking dog with large fangs, and he's just taunting the dog, and 
and you're wa watching it. It's just cruel and upsetting. And then the chain snaps. The collar breaks. The dog attacks the man. And all of a sudden, he's in a, he's in a panic. <laughs> the dog bites into his throat. Uh, Sherlock and Watson and other uh, keepers of the house run over. They separate them. Um, the dog knows that there's something wrong with the person. He can smell the pheromones or just smell something it's not it's not his master and when other people come down he's perfectly calm he's like a, he's a normal nice uh, happy dog and so at, at this point you know the reason Sherlock is there is what's going on with this guy how is he crawling up and down the walls why is he walking on his hands and feet um, why is he pressing his face up up against the windows why is he tormenting the dog and it very much is like finding out that there's a great ape uh, running around the, 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 the tops of the, the, the uh, building top, the tops of uh, buildings in the city. And it turns out that there's some mad scientist in Prague or whatever that was making these serums out of um, like violent little monkeys or something and um, the professor who was upset that uh, he's older and there's a young girl that didn't like him. He wanted to uh, reinvigorate his vitality. He goes and sees the mad scientist that gives him this monkey serum. He takes the monkey serum and starts acting like a monkey and he develops um, all of these traits and he wants to walk on his hands and feet and climb up the walls. And it's pretty unsatisfying uh the, the only thing is it's so silly it, it must be the silliest of the bunch um re really just a, a disappointing ending uh, as it's going along and you're thinking to yourself well how does this wrap up even in the fantastical world of sherlock holmes where um, outrageous things can happen supernatural things don't really happen and when they do there is very much a natural explanation and the excuse the excuse of the natural uh, explanation is a monkey serum that uh, reinvigorates your vitality but also gives you monkey traits uh, is a little bit too far-fetched so <laughs> Um, not my favorite. Uh, great moments that remind me of Dracula, my favorite parts of Dracula and Bram Stoker. There's moments that are great, but when it comes together as a whole, um, it's silly. So, uh, The Adventure of the Creeping Man. Uh, let me know if you've read it. Um, thank you for watching. Please leave a comment if you would like, and take care.